So I'm working my way through this document, this Project 2025 document. I, I must be crazy. I must be insane for wanting to read this thing. But there's little things in here sometimes that make me laugh, but not in a good way. On one hand, yes, I laugh at it because it's ludicrous, but on the other hand, these folks are deadly serious. So here they're talking about pillar one, two, three, and four, the four different pillars of their approach here in Project 2025. And they're describing pillar three like this, is the Presidential Administration Academy, an online educational system taught by experts from our coalition for newcomers. Folks, this is a brainwashing academy for God's sakes. Let's just call it what it is. <laughs> Presidential Administration Academy. Okay. And then they're trying to do this, folks. They're trying to reframe this whole notion of freedom and what it, what it means to most Americans. So they're quoting Ronald Reagan and, and trying to do this. They say, freedom is a fragile thing, and it's never more than one generation away from extinction. It is not ours by way of inheritance. It must be fought for and defended constantly by each generation. So then what they're trying to do here, folks, is they're, they're deciding, let's go ahead and just reframe freedom of speech, no LGBT rights, no women's reproductive rights, as a fight for freedom. I mean, literally, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, this is how borderline crazy these people are. Let's just reframe the whole notion of freedom so they don't think that they're actually not getting what they used to have and the same freedoms. Let, let's just reframe it. But we're going to quote Ronald Reagan when we do that. And then, folks, they go on and they talk about this. They talk about the American family being in crisis. And they go on and say 40% of all children are born to unmarried mothers, including more than 70% of black children. There is no government program that can replace the hole in a child's soul cut out by the absence of a father. Fatherlessness is one of the principal sources of American poverty, crime, mental illness, teen suicide, substance abuse, rejection of the church, and high school dropouts. Did they leave anything else out? So many of the problems government programs are designed to solve by can't are ultimately problems created by the crisis of marriage and the family. So what they're saying here is that yeah, we see the crisis, and I'll agree, you know, there there is a crisis with single mothers, but I don't think the programs designed to safety net these people are the problem. I mean, if if something happens where you have a single mother, you, you shouldn't run through a litany of excuses as to why you shouldn't help her, in my view. And they they offer up this vision of what the problem is, but they don't really give you any other way to solve it other than cutting the programs to these people, which clearly will not solve the problem of unmarried mothers. You know, so it's stuff like that. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yes, we all agree that there are unmarried mothers, but let's not cut the programs that support them. Let's not just toss them out into the street. And then they say this, it's time for policymakers to elevate family authority formation and cohesion is their top priority, and even use government power, including through the tax code, to restore the American family. We do that. Okay? We, we currently do that in the tax code, right? And then they go on to say, folks, after saying that, and then they attack gays and diversity, equity, and inclusion. I mean, that's that's the way that they do it. Let's Let's help them, but then, you know, we'll say that, but then we're going to attack DEI, you know, and they're doing that today with the Secret Service and the, the women that literally mounted on top of President Trump to try to form human shields. And they're, they're just, you know, saying that's a result, you know, their, their ineptitude, right, at nonetheless of, of forming a human shield for President Trump. That, that shooter was, was able to gain access through their ineptitude. I mean, it's insane. It really is. And to, to say that, yes, there's a, there's a family crisis going on and we need to cut the programs that help these people, but we need to change the tax code to help institute, you know, more of a structure of support for families. And then they later just kind of attack DEI and 
and lesbians, gays, and transgenders, and all of that. Really, they, that's their problem, right? It's not the tax code. The problem is DEI, they think, and, and LGBT people. That This is the source, the root of all of their evil. You know, this is why we have, you know, single mothers out there. I mean, this is crazy stuff. It really is. And then they say this, folks. There's promise number two, which is dismantle the administrative state and return self-governance to the American people. Basically, this is their cover. Dismantle the administrative state is cover for dismantling freedom. So when you hear that, that's what they're really doing at the end of the day. That's the goal. They, they call it the administrative state. Let's tear, tear it down. But no, ultimately, what they want to do is dismantle freedom. And then they say this stuff. And, you know, I, I'm, I, nobody, I, I think, out there really thinks that pornography is a blessing to the American public. I don't think anybody feels that way. You know, maybe somewhere. But my point here is they're not going to stop with trying to get rid of pornography, folks. They say this, pornography manifested today in the omnipresent propagation of transgender ideology and sexualization of children, for instance, is not a political Gordian knot, inextricably binding up separate claims about free speech, property rights, and sexual liberation and child welfare. It has no claim to First Amendment protection, which clearly it does. Its purveyors are child predators and misogynistic exploiters of women. Their product is addictive as any illicit drug. They would know, wouldn't they? And as psychologically destructive as any crime. And then they go on to say this. Pornography should be outlawed. The people who produce and distribute it should be imprisoned. Educators and public librarians who purvey it should be classified as registered sex offenders. So there is a little bit of creep on what they're, they're giving you an idea of what they think pornography is and stuff that's basically in libraries. Folks, I don't think uh, really meets the metric of pornography as humankind knows it, but nonetheless, they want to put librarians who purvey this into prison and call them registered sex offenders. They are not going to stop here, folks. This is the beginning for them, but not the end. Freedom of speech is something that we all treasure in this democracy. And when we say that he's beating up the bedrock of our democracy, that Trump is doing that, it's because of stuff like this. It's because of the fake elector scheme. It's because he thinks every election is rigged. But they're not going, the point is, they're not going to stop with pornography. And folks, then he wants to, of course, kill the Environmental Protection Agency because it just gets in the way of business. And then you want to, you see them here also wanting to kill the Department of Education and make public education Christian education, like they kind of did in LA just recently. According to this article from the AP, they're saying that the legislation that Republican Governor Jeff Landry signed in Louisiana on Wednesday way back requires a poster-sized display of the Ten Commandments in large, easy, easily readable font in all public classrooms from kindergarten to state-funded universities. So that's, that's where they want to go with the Department of Edu Education. So you've got to kill it to replace it so that you can make it Christian education. I don't have anything against Christian education, but should it be forced on everybody? Shouldn't we have a choice? And what about the other religions? And folks, then you've got the, the notion here that they want to eliminate the largest combined fighting force in the world. And I'm talking about NATO. They enthusiastically support supranational organizations like the United Nations and the European Union, it says here in Project 2025, which are run and staffed almost entirely by people who share their values and are mostly insulated from the influence of national elections. Long story made short, let's just get the hell out of the, the NATO organization and eliminate the largest combined fighting force in the world. Boy, that would make Putin happy. And then they just want to lie in some cases here, folks. Listen to this. This is one of those things where it's funny, but not so funny. 
Only in the federal government could an applicant in the hiring process be sent to the front of the line because of a history of drug addiction or alcoholism or due to morbid obesity or how about irritable, irritable bowel syndrome or a psychiatric disorder. Let's just lie about it, right? You know, let's just, let's just go, you know, maybe they came back from lunch and they were just pissed off, right? Let's just, let's just flat out lie. Morbid obesity. So if you're morbid, morbidly obese, you get to the front of the line in a federal job, or you got a psych psychiatric disorder, you get to the front of the line. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds a little uh, like a lie. And then folks, you've got this where they say, if a conservative administration does not respect the Constitution, no administration will. Isn't that interesting? If a conservative administration does not respect the Constitution, no administration will. I guess that doesn't apply to undermining democracy with the fake elector scheme that he came out with and all of the notions of rigged elections. So when they talk about respecting the Constitution, folks, it doesn't apply to them. Really, it doesn't. That's for everybody else. They can do whatever the hell they want with fake electors and rigged elections. And they can still, within their sick minds, be respecting the Constitution of the United States. And it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way with Americans, whether you're libertarian, whether you're a Democrat or even a Republican for that matter. No, doing those things is not saying that you have respect for the Constitution. And this is another good one here, folks. So they're talking about the White House Council and they say the White House Council does not serve as the president's personal attorney in non-official matters. It is almost impossible to delineate exactly where an issue is strictly personal and has no bearing on the president's official function. So let's just let the White House counsel attorneys serve as Trump's personal attorneys. Let's just blur the line, right? Why not? Heck, they're not paying for it. And then here's another one about the attorneys, folks, where they're talking about this. Let's hire attorneys that could care less about the career impact of the decisions that they make on behalf of the Trump administration. Let's get people that just don't give a rat's patootie. And they say this, quoting Project 25, the White House Counsel's Office cannot serve as a finishing school to credential the next set of white shoe law firm attorneys or federal judges in waiting who cabin their opinions for fear their elite credentials could be tarnished through a policy disagreement. Rather, it should function more as an activist yet ethical plaintiff's firm that advocates for its client, the administration's agenda, within the limits, of course, of the Constitution. Wink, nod. So let's get people that just don't care about their future so they can do crazy things, right? And they don't have to worry about not being able to find a job when he gets voted out because of all the crazy stuff that he's done. And then, folks, here's another one. They're talking about the National Security Council. How about this? Do you think that fewer people helping Trump make decisions is a really good idea? I mean, seriously. But that's what they're saying here. The next administration should try to limit the number of detailees to ensure a more direct presidential control for the National Security Council. No, that's not a good idea. Now, we need more people helping him get through, right? Make, helping him get through the logic and the common sense of decisions that relate to our national security. No, fewer, fewer is not good. And then, folks, I've got this. So for those of you who say that Trump doesn't believe in the Project 25, no, he doesn't know anything about it. He doesn't quite quit bringing this up. He doesn't know anything about it. Well, to that, I say this. Have a listen country is going to hell. The critical job of institutions such as Heritage is to as you lay the groundwork, and Heritage does such an incredible job at that. This is a great group, and they're going to lay the groundwork and detail plans for exactly what our 
movement will do and what mm. your movement will do when the American people give us a colossal mandate to save America. And that's coming. That's coming. Oh, so you do know about the Heritage Foundation and what they're doing and how they're laying the groundwork. Folks, this man's serious. And we're going to keep going through this. So till next time.